Hey gang, today we're going to talk about the Topps Tom Brown Tracker and the Tracker Style Knife, the origins and the truth about this knife coming at you. Welcome back. So we were out here grilling and I've been meaning to do this video for a little while. So I got out a few of my knives and we're gonna focus on one knife, my probably my favorite general purpose survival knife, a tracker style knife. And this knife is very controversial and it gets a lot of flack and there's people who it just, it seems that nobody just kind of likes this knife. Most people either absolutely love it or they absolutely hate it. And honestly, there's not a whole lot of people that seem to actually have the true story behind this knife. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. I've had this one for a while now, and as you can see, I use my knife. I really like it. It really is probably my favorite style of knife. The Topps one is uh, the one that I have because it seems to be the best value for the money as far as tracker style knives go. There's a few people that make them right now, and honestly, out of the ones that are out there, the only ones I personally would fool with would be either the Bark River Tracker or the Grail of Tracker Knives, the Dave Beck. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the origin of this style of knife. This knife was not invented for a movie. A lot of people really think that because of the Hunted movie that uh, Benicio Del Toro and on Tommy Lee Jones were in. It's it's a good movie, you know. It is a good movie, but it's the knife is one. It's not meant for fighting. It, it was not made for that movie. This this knife was meant to be an all-purpose survival knife, and the origins of it go back to the 80s and the very first tracker in this format goes back to 1991 and Dave Beck was the man that came up with it. Um, the original idea goes back to a knife called the Medicine Blade from the 80s. And there was a lot going on here and we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on here before we get any further into the story. So you look at this thing and it's a crazy looking knife. You know, it, it's, it's thick, it's heavy, you know, and it's got these weird things going on. So let's talk about what we actually have going on here and why things are shaped the way they are to start with. All right, you'll notice I added the pinky lanyard. All right, and I think it needs a pinky lanyard, this type of a knife. You have the main components are this edge with the quarter round. Then you have your hatchet point all right, this is the hatchet section of it. Now, on the Topps model, they do their saw a little differently. This is a saw back. Some people say it's only good for notching. I've cut all the way through branch, small branches with it. It cuts. It does work. It's functional. Uh, you can use it for scoring and scraping and all kinds of other things. And I also use it for my ferro rod. Okay. Uh, this one right here, I have not used this function. I will, I'm going to test it eventually, but this extra long groove in here, is for worrying through a fence. So what you do is you take your barbed wire or your chain length or whatever type of fencing wire and you kind of latch it down on it and then you go back and forth like this and it worries or flexes that piece of wire till it breaks. Does it work? I've seen it work. I've not done it personally, but then back here you have the baton saddling or batoning saddle, and then you have this jimping, I think is what they call it. That's just to, for like that, so you can choke up on it like this and use it for uh, your thumb to put some force behind it. Now, the grip is one of the things people will also talk bad about. Uh, the grip is designed specifically to be able to get the correct angle for a snap cut so that when you're holding it, you take your pinky. The best way I found to do it is to take your pinky, put it through that lanyard, 
index finger around that first loop, just like that. And when you're holding it like that, or holding it back here like this, okay, it's not going anywhere because of the pinky lander. All right, it's not gonna go anywhere and you can put as much whack behind it as you, as you want. But when you hold it like that, you'll notice that where it would be in relationship to a hatchet. If the hatchet handle is straight out of my hand, the blade comes out here and bang. That's how it's supposed to work. So you can swing it like a hatchet if you know where to hold it and it hits perfectly right here, okay? A lot of people seem to struggle with doing using that technique and they try to hold it up here or hold it up here to chop with and they end up chopping with just this portion of the blade. That's not the way it's designed. It's designed for you to hold it down like this. It has the lanyard hole for a reason. Make you a pinky lanyard. I highly recommend a pinky lanyard. I'll explain here in a minute. But when you chop with it like this, this ends up acting like a hatchet. Now this is something that is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. Um, people call this a gut hook. That's not a gut hook. It has absolutely nothing to do with gutting anything. It's not for skinning. It's not for gutting. It has nothing to do with the purpose behind it. This is called a quarter round. Okay. The purpose of the quarter round is to simplify getting curls out of a stick for making fire. That's it, okay? That's all that's for. You, you grip the knife, you can grip it like that or like that. You hit, you, this knife gives you just an infinite number of ways to be creative with your grip and your cutting style. But when you hold it like that and you draw it up a stick, or well, one of the ways I like to do it and I'll show you, I'll do a little tutorials, but there's a technique where you can stick it in a log and draw the material across the edge of it. And it makes nice, perfect little curls to get a really fluffy tinder bundle out of a stick for building fire. This knife wasn't ever designed nor intended for delicate use. This is a very hard use knife that was designed to excel at two things, and that is building fires and building shelters. If you're wanting a skinning knife, yeah, you could probably make this work, but that's not what it was designed to do. It was never designed to do delicate work. Uh, if you want to do delicate work with it, I mean, bro, you can hold it like that. You can use the point for things, and there's a, I've seen, so many different ways where people manipulate this knife to be able to use it for delicate work, but it never was intended for that. All right. This sucker is meant for building a shelter out of materials you find in the wilderness, for processing wood down to build a fire, and for building a fire. And this is the, this is the main function of this knife. It always originally had a small knife that you pair with it, a companion knife. If you go to Dave Beck's website and look at his knives, the WSK, uh, it, one of the options is it comes with a companion. The Topps model actually had a companion knife called the Scout. The, I, don't, I never seen them do it in this particular color. They only do it with their black and uh, green or black and blue design. So. Anyways, yeah, you guys, give it a try, and I'm telling you, I'm going to put this down just a second. I have Mora's, you know, the Mora Carbon Garberg, it is like the go-to knife for most bushcraft and stuff like that. I have one of these, and this is an excellent knife, but it doesn't do what this one does. You know, I have the Mora Companion HD. I've pickled it myself and, and turned it black. And I've put the 90 degree spine on it myself. And I've used it extensively as well. So, if you learn how to use this knife properly, it's a fantastic knife. Is it for everybody? No, not at all. And I'm not saying that this has to be your choice. This is just my favorite choice. And I would love to have a Dave Beck, you know, the Tops one when you can find it is about 200 bucks a Dave Beck the full set you know you're talking like 17 1800 dollars something like that so you know 
get you this and you're not going to have to take out a loan but so we'll go over this real quick to the pinky lanyard and why i chose a pinky lanyard versus a wrist lanyard i think a pinky lanyard is the safer option for something that you're going to be chopping with the reason for that is the shortness of this lanyard prevents this knife from coming out of my grip completely if I lose grip. See how that works? I can pull on this. Someone could pull on this. Or it could, I could swing with all of my might and lose my grip and it's not coming all the way out of my hand. And the reason you don't want it to come all the way out of your hand and you want to keep it short is so that the knife won't turn down and swing out and down and back at you. Okay, a wrist lanyard, it will do that. It, if it slips all the way out, it's coming down and around and back at you and you risk wounding yourself. So, you know, with this one, I made it a little extra long. It needs to be a little shorter, honest with you, but you could fit two fingers through there and swing with all of your might and it's absolutely never coming off. Never gonna lose grip on it. It's never gonna swing back at you. So, you know, that's really what I got to say about that for this video. I'll do some more tutorial videos on how to do specific things with this type of a knife. And I'm going to put it down now and I'm going to show you the sheath that the, the tops comes with this sheath. And it is not the best sheath in the world, but it works. So it's not like you got to go try and get some custom leather sheath for this thing right out of the gate or something. It works. It works all right. The retention is fine. You know, it. I've never had this sucker fall out on me. Okay. These clips, they rotate. If you want to carry it like this, you can. If you like the Scout carry, which is the across the center, middle of the back, that was popularized in the movie it was it was a way people carried knives so and then it comes wrapped this is the original uh paracord that tops wraps their knives with though so they wrap this with the paracord and the reason for that and i have done it and i'll have to shoot a video on that but you could build a bow drill set with this very well this is fantastic for putting your notches in a bow drill set this is fantastic for splitting down uh, softwood. And I try to not baton a knife or try to, I really try to not try to split hardwoods with any kind of a knife. It's just not a great idea. So I refrain from doing that. That's a little bit abusive in my opinion. But you have paracord here that you can use for either building shelter or a bow drill. So yeah. I'm going to make a custom leather sheath for it eventually myself with the features that I want. But the one that it comes with isn't bad. It's not bad at all. It works. So we'll go over to the origins again. Okay, so realistically speaking, from everything that I can gather, the knife was originally designed by Dave Beck. He made the knife for the movie, which is very uh, slightly different. His profile. This section is longer, so you have a better chopping surface right there. And it also, this part here is kind of incorporated into the grip. So this grip comes up higher there, and then that is all incorporated into it, and it's a little bit more pronounced, okay? Now that knife is, in the movie, mainly used for fighting. This is not a fighting knife, guys. Uh, to be honest with you, probably the first time that you took this knife and tried to stab someone with it, your hand's going to go whoop and slide up that blade, and you're getting stitches. That's not fun, I promise you. Um, it's meant for survival. Anyways, they never gave Dave Beck credit for making the knife. His name was eliminated out of there. Uh... Dave Beck had to close shop. He had suffered from an injury, and he eventually lost the rights to the name, the Tracker Knife. He still has, you can go to his website, he still has a, the original one that he made that says Tracker on the knife. So Tom Brown Jr. kind of swindled him out of the name, 
and went to Topps because nobody else was really making it at the time and Topps agreed to make this and this has been one of their flagship knives since then. And I mean, they have a 20th anniversary model and it's a fantastic knife. A lot of people hate this coating on it. I don't mind it because you can use the saw teeth for scraping things and for using a ferro rod. But anyways, he legally has to call his knives something else now. And he calls it a WSK or a Wilderness Survival Knife. I would go check it out. I've seen a few other people try to say, oh, my daddy designed it. One, of, one of, I think one of the craziest videos I've ever seen was this guy saying his daddy actually designed the knife, never provided names or anything like that. And uh, no, of course, no information or evidence to back that. And to me, yeah, because he said that he, I've redesigned this. I've added a feature to this and, and I'm going to show you that my, the, because of this, my daddy designed it. And I'm like, well, that doesn't help anyways. And it was pretty obvious to me he had no idea what this knife was meant for. Uh, he designed a gut hook, like an actual gut hook into here. Like, like down and like that. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is the baton saddle. This is for splitting wood, which is what this knife was pretty much designed to do, is process firewood and shelter wood. You need the baton saddle for that. And so he basically destroyed the, the pure function of the knife to add a, a gut hook to the knife. So that's kind of a big sign to me that he doesn't have a clue what this knife is about. And his daddy definitely didn't design it. But anyways, guys, I uh, don't mean to be overly negative and attacking people. I'm not going to mention names of people like that. So they don't feel like I'm personally attacking them. But anyways, guys, if you've never seen this knife or you've, you've kind of always shied away from it or thought it was just a movie knife, the truth is it's not. It is an excellent knife. And yeah, it's heavy, but let's be real here. It's a knife. It's not that heavy. Is it heavy for not? Yeah, it's not that heavy though, guys. It's it's like a pound and a half, two pounds, something like that. I don't know. I don't really notice it in the scout configuration. Um, anyways, I think it's a fantastic knife that every woodsman should at least give a try. Give it a try, guys. And if you can't afford the Dave Beck or the Bark River, the Tops one's about 200 bucks. So... I think that's about all I got to say about it right now, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please ask all the questions you want. Um, let me know what you would like to see me do with the knife so I can show you for myself if I've done it, and I'll show you how I did it. If I haven't done it, I'll give it a try. We'll see how it works out. So I appreciate it. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you.